Welcome back, everyone. Today is Thursday, October the 19th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. You guys can help us keep the conversation going by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and your family. Leave us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave some links in the description so you can do just that. Today's verse of the day is coming to us from 1 Corinthians 2.14. It says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I think verses like this are a big encouragement, especially when you're dealing with people who are either non-believers or outright antagonistic yeah. toward Christianity. Um, I've had some people in my life who are just like, how can you believe in this made up fairy tale that mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Um, and I would imagine many of our viewers and listeners have had the same experience. But verses like this remind us, like if they regard what you believe as foolishness, mm-hmm. You should expect that because right. they don't have the Spirit of God inside of them to help them discern these spiritual truths, these spiritual realities. So they are going to see this foolishness until that is revealed to them through a relationship with God. I mean, it's it's literally like being frustrated that I'm describing something to a blind man. Like I'm describing to him what this red ball looks yeah. like. And he's like, I, what why, is red? Well, yeah. Why can't you understand this? Well, because he can't see it. Right, right. And and I think it's one of those things that we put a lot of the burden on ourselves. Like if I just am better at communicating, if I'm if I'm if I mean it more or yeah. I say it better or I put it in the right order or I establish a relationship, all those things help. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that truth, like it says in First Corinthians, is spiritually discerned. Right. The Holy Spirit has to move and work in that person, and then your seeds of of influence start to take root. That's right. We've got to be obedient and sharing, but um, you know, it's the work of God that brings them to that moment of realization. That's right. That's right. Nobody's going to hell because I didn't communicate well enough or I didn't do a good job, right. you know, uh, explaining it properly. So uh, it does take a lot of that pressure off, and then it allows the Holy Spirit to actually do what He does when you give Him that room to work. Right. I've got a very, very light gripe vine today. A light gripe. Welcome to the gripe vine. This is a light one. I'm just going to pick a small one. Light. I can't get any sound out. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be light in that it's not really that big a deal or that a very small amount of people are going to relate to it, but it's 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 a light gripe. I'm not really super uh, annoyed at this because it's something that I live with every day, and I think all of us to a, in this room to an extent do, but if you work in tech or production, mm-hmm. like like we do, we we are very very heavily involved. I mean, look at what we're doing right now. Yeah, and then also production. Like what I mean by that is running services, running pro presenter lyrics, lights, slides, music, live sound, videos. If you work in that field, you never, ever, ever. Oh my! Why turn that R. off? Headphone in listeners. your mind. Sorry, <laughs> headphone warning. You can't go to a movie. You, you can't, can't issue a headphone warning after the headphone. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. He's got one headphone yeah. off. Did it hurt you? Uh, maybe. I'm maybe so sorry. Bit. My eardrums are <laughs> ruptured. All of us in this room, including Nicholas, are, are production minded because we work in this in this field. Mm-hmm. And so you can't go to a movie. You can't go to a concert. You can't go to another church. You can't go anywhere without always being thinking about what software they're using to run their lights. I wonder yeah. how they get this video wall to to display two different projections from the same source. Yeah. I wonder why they're using that compressor on their main vocal and not this. You just don't ever turn that off. Yeah. It's always with you. I have noticed that because when I first started here, um, I was not production minded at all. I'd mm-hmm. never worked in that setting before. I'd never been involved in anything like high tech production level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just being here and learning and, and being a part of ministry here, um, I have definitely found that like going to conferences or something, I'll be like, okay, now the lights are doing this and I wonder why, why they're doing this that way. And okay, that that transition was kind of sloppy. They must yeah. have rehearsed that ahead of time. Yeah. And for me, it's, it takes more, I know you're, you're more of a, a tech minded uh-huh. guy, but for me, it takes more of a, a, a volunteer coordination. Mm-hmm. Um, perspective because that's a lot of what I do here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, there's not a person manning this booth, so maybe they were they they didn't relay this right, correctly in the right. email, or it seems like there's an overabundance of volunteers over here, so maybe they're on their break. And I wonder, oh, they have name tags. Okay, well, that's interesting that they put name tags. Like I'm just thinking all of those thoughts when the guy's like, 
are you going to pay for the book? Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> you're, you're holding ready, up the line, check dude. Out. I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you're in like a That's So Raven mm-hmm. vision, like just seeing yep. all these things. <laughs> I think you just come back come back to reality. Oh, oh. Yeah, for, for me, it's definitely the same, like especially with like tech stuff like you're talking about because when I see these different elements, I'm like, okay, I see that they have two LED screens and then it looks like on this screen they do have this bar going with the lyrics, but they also have on this one like this weird animated type thing. Right. And I'm like trying to figure out, I wonder what software they're using. Yeah. I always ask myself, what soundboard are they mixing mm-hmm. on? Mm-hmm. Um, the funniest thing, and it's not really funny because I know the pain, is to see when something goes wrong. Oh, oh yeah. Side. Yep. I saw that. Yeah, like, everyone, everyone around you is like, oh, ha, ha, but we're all like, oh, gosh, yeah, oh, that's, man. You feel, Someone's you feel having a terrible pain. day. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, man, Pro Presenter just crashed hard, and, and then it's like... And it's not a it's not a church either. If it's like a secular event, somebody's someone is getting, getting fired, fired on oh, the yeah. spot. Yep. I, I, I went to the Blink-182 concert in, um, in Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte? Yeah, I think it was in Charlotte. And uh, it was kind of the same thing where... It, and it's, it's one of those things where any concert... I go to or any event like that I always go talk to the guy front who's running front of house sound and I always talk if they have one I talk to the video director now for our listeners what is front of house sound? front of house is like the main sound like the mixer the person who is mixing what you hear okay you have front of house sound which is like the main sound and you've got like monitors people who mix their in-ears and stuff but I always talk to that guy and I always go talk to the video director because sometimes you just learn really cool stuff and then sometimes you like to see like hey these guys are professional and they're struggling with the same stuff that I struggle with every single week so but yeah like they had a they had an error where like the wrong video played at the wrong time and uh nobody else probably even noticed it but I was like oh that wasn't supposed to happen yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Someone's in trouble for that. It even gets to where it like extends itself into music things. Since Mm -hmm. I know we do like songwriting type stuff. Yeah. Sometimes I'll listen to a song and I'm like, how did they write that so that it sounded good? Mm -hmm. Because I, I, it's just when you're in that, like you guys said, the different areas of production, that mindset. Yeah. Or or even if you listen to like older country music, it's like, who in the world allowed that to be written? Like someone, someone wrote that down on a piece of paper, showed it to an executive, and someone approved that. Like. What on earth? Yeah. Maybe that's its own gripe vine for a, a later date because there I've got some beef with some old country music songs. <laughs> some of those lyrics are questionable at best. Yeah, the, and the, like you said, this is a light gripe because it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, no, it's uh, fine. It's just kind of a, a a reality that we've all come to come to just kind of recognize. You don't like, really get to enjoy things innocently anymore. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> you always, you're picking it apart. Yeah, that's just how your brain's been trained. Uh huh. Let us know if that's your experience. If you work maybe in like an AV field or like maybe a personnel management field and you find yourself kind of applying those uh, thinking strategies and stuff to to wherever it is that you go outside of that context of work, let us know. Send us a text to 252-582-5028 or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. Hey there, listeners. I'm John Galantis. And I'm Ellie Galantis. And we just want to take a quick second and talk to you about Dr. Shaw's and Nicole's book, 30 Days to a New Beginning, Daily Devotions to Help You Move Forward. You know, this is actually the second book in the 30 Days series. And the whole point of this devotional is to help us get unstuck from the ruts of life. You know, when it comes to running the race of life, it matters how you start, but a bad start doesn't ultimately determine how you finish the race. You can have a good finish even with a bad start, and that's where this book comes in. No matter who you are or where you are in life, you're going to get stuck. Instead of going out and buying some gadget or some planner, like I know I've done several times. I know that's right. 30 Days encourages you to find your fresh start in God's Word. Life doesn't have a reset button, but our God is a God who does new things. His mercies are new every day, which means every day is a new chance for you to start over. You can grab 30 Days to a New Beginning on Amazon.com. We're going to leave a link in the description box below. And if you already have the book, let us know what you think about it. That's right. Send us a text, 252-582-5028. Share what God has done in your life through this devotional. Hey, maybe we'll even read your story on the air. Ellie, you ready to get back to the show? Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252 582 
That's right. And if today's your first time ever joining us here on the Clearview Today Show, we want to welcome you, let you know exactly who's talking to you. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abadanshah.com. Dr. Shah, we were talking earlier today about uh, how how you're wired in your mind, like when you work in a specific field. Like if you... Uh, if you are in tech or if you're in production, it's hard to turn that off. When you're reading, mm -hmm. is it difficult to turn off the scholarly part of your brain? Yeah. You really? Yeah, it is. Uh, in fact, anything you do is hard to turn that off. But again, I will caution, uh, have moderation. Mm -hmm. have, have the middle ground. Don't be overly deterministic. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, determined, not deterministic. D overly determined about something or be having a superior mindset that I am, I am, I got this, I'm, I'm. Don't do that. Don't do that about working out. Don't do that about studying. Don't do that about playing. Don't, don't find that middle place, that mm -hmm. moderation. And it's so much better because if you do that, let's say with working out, you're going to have that, yeah, I can do this, that. And then go out there and you'll pull the same thing with your children mm -hmm. or with your wife. Mm -hmm. It's not smart. Or with somebody who may just being a jerk and you'll be tempted to, you just, you can bench press that guy. So, but you'll have the same mindset now to take mm -hmm. it out on them. Uh, books, reading, really scholarly work. And then somebody asks a stupid question like, um, so um, was Paul and Peter like both from like Jerusalem or something? Mm -hmm. And you're like, I, I'm I cannot believe that's such a dumb question. <laughs> Let me explain to you about how first century geography works. <laughs> no, they don't, you, you don't need to go like that. Yeah. So how can you read, study, work out, play? Like even playing. If you're if you're an athlete and somebody just wants to kick around with you, you if you're not going to turn that off and go the moderation way, which is less determined and less superior or have the superiority complex, you're going to make that little time of throwing catch or just a quick game with, with your son or your friend, basketball, it'll, it'll become miserable. And they'll That's be true. like, hey, I'm not going to play with you again. Mm -hmm. you, just, you dunked on me like yeah. five times. But why? You didn't yeah. have to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's I, I, I have to be careful in that regard. I think I think we all do. And it's it's interesting you say that because I fe I've I've found in those times where you can just turn it off, a lot of the anxiety and a lot of the worry and the stress that we put on ourselves tends to go away. You know, God's yeah, yeah. kind of, God kind of works in that way where his peace comes on us. Yeah, and that's I mean, that's what we're talking about on today's episode is this issue of anxiety. Um, you know, this isn't a new concept, but it is something that's being talked about more prevalently in today's culture. Um, anxiety is something that a lot of people struggle with. Mm. Something that, that, you know, a lot of people would describe themselves as anxious or having anxious thoughts. Yeah, I wonder when anxiety went from being an emotion that we had to a condition that some only some people have. Mm. You know, mm. like, like, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that like, uh, facetiously, I, I truly believe that because when people say, you know, I have anxiety, my question, my automatic question is, who doesn't? You know what I mean? Who mm -hmm. who doesn't feel anxious at yeah. times? And so I'm just curious as to how that how that happened. Yeah, I think some people have poor nerves. Mm -hmm. They they are built that way. Does their family background that they are very nervous, like you're fidgety, they just cannot seem to. You know, oh my gosh, I can't. And they're they're just built that way. Their mom was like that, or their grandmother was like that, or their granddaddy was like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it sort of runs in the family, and it's hard to control that because mm -hmm. it's it's part of who you are. Yeah. But with prayer and godly understanding and godly wisdom, you can learn how to manage those things. Mm -hmm. That's the key: learning how to manage those things and not giving in to those emotions. Yeah. Not just saying. Well, this is who I am. Yeah. I gotta. That's, that's that's my cross to bear. No, you can with godly wisdom, guidance, and submission to the Lord. You can find ways to work with it. You'll never completely abandon it. And sometimes, when you least expect it, it's gonna jump back on you, and you will shake your head and mm -hmm. go, "How in the world did that happen? I thought I was so beyond that, but now I'm. I made the same mistake, or I had the same emotion, or the same." 
uh, shortness of breath or whatever it is that I had like 15 years ago, it came back. Ah, but I, w- I would suggest uh, the best way to handle that is to have a proper perspective on who God is, what is, what is he doing in your life, how much is he in control of your life, how much are you living for him. Those are the things will help mitigate mm-hmm. some of this other stuff. Yeah. I love the way that you just put that, and I think it was healing for a lot of our listeners and viewers because, um, you know, there's often this rhetoric of, oh, you're dealing with anxiety or, oh, you have anxious thoughts. Well, you're not praying enough. You don't have enough faith. Yeah. You're not believing enough. If you would just do this enough, mm-hmm. then your anxiety would go away. Right. And that's just, I mean, there's a sense in which we need to feed into our faith, and that's yeah. certainly true, but what if our anxiety doesn't go away? Right. What yeah. if our anxious thoughts don't stop happening. Yeah, this may be something you have to deal with the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And then you have to deal with people around you who either don't have it or don't get it. And so like it's like you said, it's like, well, just, you know, man up, just be more like me. You know, I think a lot of, we talked about yeah. that a little bit, some of these kind of hyper-masculine role models that have emerged in the past, I would say, what, a couple of years, maybe the last five years. Mm. Uh, and I won't name any names, but there's just, even in the secular world, there's these really, really aggressively hyper-masculine figures who have emerged and started giving out really terrible advice and talking about the anxieties for the week and um, you're not a real man or you're not a real woman and, and you just have to you just have to do it. Look at me, look at me, I'm rich, I've got all this stuff, I don't have anxiety. I think putting up with that either turns people away or it makes it to where they're like, no, I am I was right to feel anxious because I'll never have that and that's who I have to contend yeah. with and mm-hmm, put up with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In our world of TikTok videos mm-hmm. and Snapchat and Instagram stories or whatever it is, uh, you know, after a thousand takes, then you have that one perfect thing right. that you're putting out there, which may not be the truth, or psyching yourself up to do this. But then there's another aftermath that we never see, which is you being hateful to your wife and your kids, mm-hmm. or you having a horrible day. Uh, well, nobody sees that video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we do see the one where you are so confident, so in control. And so ready to help the poor stragglers of life. I don't know. I don't think that's real. Yeah. How do you how do you factor in being Christian into that? Because there's then there's also that added guilt of well, Jesus said I shouldn't worry, but I yeah. but I do. I right. Worry. And so now I now I feel guilty for that, which is just going to make it mm-hmm. compound and snowball. No worry about worrying. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like now I have to kind of force myself not to worry, and that's making me even more anxious. Right. Well, I would say. Uh, go back to Matthew 6 mm. and just kind of focus in on what Jesus talks about in anxiety. He says, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, just those statements tell us that not much has changed in the world. Mm -hmm. We tend to hear a lot of sermons on how things are worse today. But yeah, maybe in some ways, but I think anxiety and fear and and stress and worry have always been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's easy for people to listen to something like that, especially if they don't work directly in the ministry, and say, okay, well, that's easy for you to say, but I still have to have food and clothes and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But I will say from my own personal life that that verse has never been truer than it is now. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is because I've, I'm here, I'm at Clearview, and I'm I'm seeking this kingdom of God. There are people here, Dr. Shaw included, uh, really is the one leading the helm that make sure that I have the things that I need. And I don't just mean a paycheck. Yeah, it goes beyond that. It's like, okay, well, what's going on in your personal life? How are you and Ellie doing? Do you need? Oh, you, there's this need. Let me see if I can talk to some people. Let me see if we can make this happen. Let's let's fix this. God has used Dr. Shaw and and the people at Clearview in a way that makes that verse come to life before my eyes. To now, I don't worry about those things. And yeah, you can yeah. call it privilege, and maybe it is. Yeah, But it's also God's promise. Yeah. Well, much of what the Bible condemns is actually worry anxiety, mm. okay, which is much more than casual concerns, but not what we call today anxiety disorders. Mm-hmm. There's a difference there. Uh, so in fact, it is hard to find anxiety disorders in the Bible, but there are many powerful 
and life-changing principles in God's Word, especially like the Sermon on the Mount, which can help us deal with those anxieties, which are worry anxiety, mm. okay? Uh, in fact, many ideas that are being sold in self-help books and bestsellers uh, are actually found right here in their most distilled and pure form. You mean if I just wash my face, everything won't just come to me? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? I spent $40 on that book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you, just like you, wash your face. Yeah, the little girl wash it. your face. Yeah, then I clicked it. Yeah. I, I missed it. I, oh, it was a best. It was a bestseller like three years ago. Yeah, the book girl wash your girl face. wash your face. I remember your wife was talking about it. She was like, "This is they're selling this to young women," and it was it was it anyway. Was, no, oh, really? It's just like self help, like Christian self help. But yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, let me just say a couple of things up front. First, some anxiety problems do require anti-anxiety medications and tranquilizers. Mm -hmm. There is a place for that. There are people out there, some Christians out there, who say, no, never. And I have met people, some in my own life, uh, who needed medications because there was some chemical imbalance going on. How are you going to fix that? Just pray over it? Yes, God can answer that. But just the way, if you have a fever... Yeah, God can answer and heal your fever, but why do you take um, Motrin? Why do you take Tylenol? Why do you take Advil or Ibuprofen? You take it because you know it's going to bring down that fever. You right. need it. Mm -hmm. So also, there's a place for taking medications. At the same time, it, it, it's not a sin, but medication alone will not solve your problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. So uh, again, we need to realize that Things need to be taken with care, mm -hmm. with proper counseling. And I'm talking about medication here. Making sure that people who are giving you that prescription do know what they're talking about and not just throwing medications at you. Mm -hmm. Make sure these are people who are properly educated. They don't have an agenda, which is hard to sometimes figure out. Mm -hmm. And uh, people uh, who will listen to your concerns and complaints. If you come to them and say, hey, I am, I'm having some serious issues, they will not be like dismissive. There are times people lose their mind because the medication is destroying them. Yeah. But they can't seem to voice it and nobody listens. Yeah. Yeah. Until it's too late. Well, it's like you said, we need that balanced view, you know, mm. we'd like to, to go on one extreme, like, oh, this is the worst thing that can ever happen to a human. We have to medicate now. We have to medicate always versus yeah. the, they just need to get over it. It seems like we always yeah. fall on one of the two extremes and mm -hmm. we never work on that yeah. balance. Anxiety disorders. Yeah, there is a place for medication. Got to be carefully given mm -hmm. and not just the first resort. Right. But then worry anxiety is what the Bible is talking about. And the word... Worry, think about that. It's, it's more than just casual concern. It comes <laughs> from the old Germanic word, worgen, mm -hmm. which means to strangle. <laughs> Isn't that what worry feels like sometimes? Yeah, like you just can't breathe. You get that yeah. real tightness in your chest. Yeah. You like have to oh, like breathe out just yeah. sitting in a room by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Middle English, it took on that meaning of, of uh, seizing somebody by the throat. Mm. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's pretty worrying. that's pretty graphic. Like yeah. they really did not like worrying. No. And at its core, worrying is refusing to trust God and live uh independently of him. Mm, that's mm. true. Yeah. That's very true. Which is sin. It's a sin. Yeah. 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 It's it's crazy because we don't think about that. Worry is one of those things where we victimize ourselves mm. and we feel like we we are the it's we're suffering, so therefore it must be virtuous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. But I but I definitely feel that way. Like and I think people who worry feel that way too. Like yeah. because I'm not enjoying this sin, yeah. it can't be that bad. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm a good person because I am carrying all of these cares and concerns and that makes me better for it. Yeah. Yeah. We attribute suffering to virtue. And so and I guess there's a there's a place for that in some sense, but then when we're inflicting suffering on ourselves by not trusting God, how can I then turn around and say, Well, that's that's yeah. somehow virtuous. Right. The word there is Mary Manao. Um, in Matthew 13, it talks about um, worry. And um, it has the... It, 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 the idea is worry. Mm -hmm. And also in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The Greek word switches from Mary Manawa to Mele, which has the idea that God takes interest in you. That care. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he cares for you. Yeah. So 
and also the word stress. We, we talk about worry and stress. Uh, there are many ways that people define stress, but the best one is stress is any situation where a person feels that they don't have adequate resources to deal with their circumstances. Mm. That's stress. That, yeah, that's that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if I've got like a billion dollars and my car breaks down, I'm not going to stress about that. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good. That's a good. Like I feel like I'm I'm unequipped or ill-equipped to, to deal with this. Therefore, I'm stressed. Yeah. Yeah. Up until um, 1983, uh, we didn't know about this stressed out. <laughs> that's when that word sort of entered. That wasn't into, uh, that yeah. wasn't popular nomenclature back then. Yeah. And I would say life is far more stressful than it used to be 30 years ago. Yeah, true. Uh, Archibald Hart, who's written a book called The Anxiety Cure. Great book, by the way. Get it. Archibald Hart, Anxiety Cure. And he says that human beings were designed for camel travel, but most people are now acting like supersonic jets. Bro, mm. Doesn't that just describe humanity yeah, in 2023? Absolutely. Isn't that like the most perfect Everything definition? is breakneck speed. Everything is right this exact second or, or else catastrophe. Yeah. 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 Anxiety is a dis- disease of stress. Mm. So we need to un- understand stress, and then we can understand anxiety a little better. Yeah. Now, Dr. Hart goes on to say that it is clearly the consequence of too much stress acting on your highly vulnerable brain chemistry. And if you have inherited a weakness in your brain's chemistry, remember we began talking about how some mm-hmm. people are just just have that nervousness mm-hmm. or they're just more anxious. I can psych them up to get up in public and speak, but they're built differently. They'll do it that time, but they're not going to do it every time. Mm. So Dr. Hart goes on to say, it is clear the, it's clearly the consequence of too much stress acting on your highly vulnerable brain chemistry. And if you have inherited a weakness in your brain's chemistry, you will have a much lower threshold for tolerating anxiety than others. He means like you'll be more likely to be anxious yes. all yeah, the time. Be more I susceptible. Hmm. He, and he even gives this formula. High adrenaline caused by overextension and stress depletes the brain's natural tranquilizers and sets the stage for high anxiety. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And what are the brain's natural tranquilizers? Well, (laughs) I mean, uh, God has designed us that when we face stress, there are these natural tranquilizers in our brain, uh, brain chemicals called neurotransmitters. Mm Mm-hmm. And that keep us sort of sane in the face of stresses in life, financial mm-hmm. stresses, sickness stresses, like, oh, oh wait, oh, I have to get a test or there's a biopsy or blah, blah, blah. Um, so some people call these neurotransmitters happy messengers. Yeah, I've heard that right? before. Serotonin, mm-hmm. noradrenaline, and dopamine. Stress depleters. Uh, uh, stress depletes our natural tranquilizers. In essence, anxiety is not that something bad has entered the brain. It's actually something good is now absent from the brain, or it's running low. Mm. That's uh, you kind of you kind of mentioned that in your um, in your uh, message last Sunday with the with the youth. You know, with darkness is not yeah a, a thing that you can quantify. Yeah, it's just it's the, the absence, absence of, something of something good. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. So that's that's sort of what's happening here. Yeah, and so it sometimes affects the toughest people. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. So. I would say don't go out there and tell people that you don't you you, you have an anxiety disorder and you need some medication. Don't don't do stuff like that. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> most people don't. Um, so anger, not an anxiety disorder. Uh, you're facing a threatening situation that needs to be dealt with. Fear, again, not an anxiety disorder. Uh, panic, not an anxiety disorder. Uh, panic attack is a body's smoke alarm that is warning you that something is not right. Mm-hmm. That's a that's an panic. Uh, but there are other types of anxiety disorders like event-specific, mm-hmm. uh, phobia-induced, r- ruminative, or focus attention, or generalized anxiety. And uh, again, I'm not a psychology professor. My wife is studying psychology and counseling. I'm just trying to introduce the church or those who are listening by radio or podcast to sort of become educated on the subject of 
anxiety and that's fear right. and stress. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, sometimes I think we throw these words around, we don't know what they're meaning. Mm-hmm. And that's that's so good, especially for those who find themselves in a church setting or maybe a leadership role or a ministry setting. The church does have a role to play. Mm-hmm. It's not just refer out. It's not just go seek medication. Yeah. Although, like you said, Dr. Shah, there is a time for that. Yeah. There is a there is a place where that yeah. can be carefully considered. Um, but the church has a role to play yeah. and in pointing sure, people pointing people who Jesus is. Oh, definitely. And make sure if you do suffer from that, that you find some good, solid biblical preaching. Yeah. Because the, God's word is the most peaceful, yeah. calming uh, salve that I've ever experienced. Yeah. And I think many, many, many people can say that. Yeah. But but it's crazy how many people suffer from anxiety and then deprive themselves of yeah. good, solid biblical preaching. Right. And I would also warn people, it's like, there is a place for medication, but mm-hmm. make sure it's for the right reasons. That's right. Exactly. And I would love for this conversation to continue. Maybe we can do a part two of this. Sure. Let's That'd do it. Great. Yeah. Let's so do it. hopefully people can get more... Uh, more informed on yeah. this subject. Nice. We can do that tomorrow. Absolutely. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, or if you have questions, maybe you're struggling with this, or you have a loved one who does, let us know by sending us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Scroll down to the bottom and click that Donate Now button and become part of our Clearview Today Show family. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.